Well, hi friends. Winter camping takes a lot of gear. I'm leaving in just a few days on a four day camping trip that the temperatures will be sub freezing in the remote areas of Northern Minnesota in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. I have two different setups. I have a hot tent setup and I have a hammock setup. And I haven't decided which one is better. I'm going to run through both of those gear loadouts and hopefully decide which setup is best for this trip. Before we get into what is in my pulk here, a pulk is a sled with a couple poles and a harness that I pull behind me so I can carry a lot more gear than if I were wearing a backpack. If you want to see a video on how I built this pulk, I'll put a link right up in the cards. Before we get into what is in this pulk though, I'm going to go through what exactly I'm going to be wearing when I hike in. On my feet, it's going to be my Steger Mucklucks. These are super warm and super comfortable. However, the temperatures up there on this trip uh, could be going above freezing to where the snow uh, may be wet. And these aren't real good for waterproof conditions. So I ordered on Amazon, and they're not here yet, some tingly rubbers. So I'm going to wear those rubber boots over my mucklucks to help keep them dry. It isn't perfect because mucklucks stay warm by breathing, but at least my feet will be dry and if it's warmer they don't have to be quite as insulated. Okay, moving my way up. A lot of gear as I said here. Um, my pants, I just have some Wrangler pants that I bought at Walmart, a Walmart that are insulated uh, and I've worn these a lot and I really like them and they're somewhat water resistant. Uh, under that I have some uh, just uh, polyester nylon spandex type underwear that uh, will wick moisture. Uh, going up, my base layer on top is my Brynja uh, mesh wool shirt. So this thing is mesh. Uh, it helps uh, dry and breathe a little bit better having that mesh. Uh, over the top of that, I'm wearing, believe it or not, when it's cold out, a lightweight sun hoodie. And uh, this is really nice because it has the thumb holes in it. And uh, it's from Wooroo Wool Company. Over the top of that, I have my Appalachian Gear Company alpaca hoodie. Uh, I will have my Appalachian Gear uh, alpaca buff here to wear around my neck. Um, I didn't mention it earlier, but I'm going to be wearing some wool socks, some thick wool socks on the way in, uh, as well as I have just a regular polyester uh, stocking cap, and I have some wool uh, gloves, hybrid mitten, where the you can peel off the fingers and use your fingers, uh, so that works real well. And on top, uh, this is a new piece of gear for me. It's the Bearskin Fleece 3.0 Tactical uh, Fleece Hoodie. I'm probably going to end up taking this thing off on the way in because I'm going to be sweating my balls off. Uh, but the reason why I like this hoodie is it has like 13 pockets in it. And when you're camping in cold weather, it's important to keep some things warm. I have some eye drops in here. I have two battery, uh, battery banks uh, for power. I have my headlamp. I have my Garmin inReach Mini. All of those battery things that can freeze when it's cold out, I keep on my body to help keep it warm. That being said, with all those power banks, this thing's pretty heavy right now. It's probably five pounds with all that gear inside of it. Okay, let's hop into what is in the Polk. And I'm gonna go through what's uh, uh, for my hot tent setup first before we talk about hammocks. Take the straps off here on top. Uh, I'm not going to start out wearing them, but I'm bringing them along. Are my uh, MSR snowshoes with the tails on the end. 
Uh, I'm not sure how deep the snow will be, even if there isn't a whole lot of snow. Uh, these work out well for working, uh, walking on a lake. The lake, the ice conditions may be a little murky, and if you have a lot of slush, these help you from sinking down in that slush a lot, and it gives you a little bit of grip. Okay, up in front here, this, I'm kind of proud of this. This is a three and a half gallon bucket from Menards. I'm going to be keeping all of my food, hopefully, that will fit inside of there. And uh, it has a screw off lid. Let's see if I can show you here. Where you can screw it off. Put the food inside of there, and it keeps it uh, kind of protected somewhat from rodents. Uh, I have a few things in here, a plate, a spoon, my fork. Uh, but I'm going to show you something else that this bucket will work for uh, a little bit later on here. Let's hop into what's inside of this big duffel. Um, there's a lot of gear in here. This, this setup with the hot tent, I tried to weigh it on my scale as you can imagine. Anything in a sled this big is a little bit hard to weigh. But I approximate that it weighs about 60 pounds which isn't quite as bad when you're pulling it in a sled versus on your back. Now this is my sleeping pad. <clears throat> it's a big, thick, as you can see, look how big this thing is. Insulated, uh, it's partially foam, partially uh, blown up. Sleeping pad for the nice cold temperatures. Uh, bought it off of Amazon, I think the brand is uh, Invoker, something like that. Okay. In here, I may not need it, but this is good at night for sitting around the campfire. Uh, it is my Leskin River Boreal uh, Big Thick Wool Pullover Shirt. This thing is really expensive, but probably the best piece of clothing that I wear. I'm just not sure that it's gonna be cold enough to wear this, but I do like wearing this around the campfire because it protects my other clothing from those sparks that come off of the fire. Okay, I have a couple extra of the wool liners that go inside of my muck uh, Last year when I was up there, I did fall through the ice with one leg just up to my knee and I uh, got wet, so I was glad I had those extra liners. Okay, I am bringing my hot tent. It is the Lux Mini Peak Pro XL. It's a nice little one person hot tent about eight and a half feet by eight and a half feet, real small. Uh, inside of here is also the center pole for that tent. Inside of my tent, I'm not bringing the little footprint that I have for putting my cot on that comes with the hot tent or you can order from Lux. I'm bringing a bigger tarp because it's probably gonna be wet uh, inside of my hot tent. So this tarp will cover underneath my uh, where my cot will be and go out a couple feet uh, out into the tent so I can walk around without any uh, without getting my feet wet and hopefully uh, preventing any mud. So that will be nice and maybe the silver will provide a little extra heat with the reflection. Now since I'm going to have that tarp in there and I'm going to have a stove, that stove would melt that tarp. But I have this uh, heat resistant blanket that I got uh, from Three Ridges Gear Company for the stove, so you lay this underneath the stove on top of the tarp and it should keep things from melting. Okay, on this trip, uh, I have a, a different uh, hot tent stove that you've seen before, but I'm gonna try a different one because that other one that I got from Three Ridges Gear Company is a great stove, but there are a lot of little pieces to it. Uh, attaching the legs, assembling it, and I'm just worried about uh, losing those pieces. So uh, this is a Danchel Outdoor. You can buy it on Amazon. I got it for free. Uh, my buddy Rob got it for free. He gave it to a buddy named Steve. Steve didn't want it and he gave it to me. I've set it up. This thing, the legs fold out. This one is made of steel and not titanium but I'm feeling a lot more comfortable without having all of those little pieces. 
the roll up still pipe is right up here on top uh, okay so one of the problems with my hot tent is when I sleep on my cot here that's the brand name I don't know I bought it on Walmart it's a pretty nice cot it weighs a lot though so I sleep on top of the cot and on top of the cot I have that big sleeping pad and the problem is, is the tent is only about eight eight and a half feet long so when I am lifted like that my feet or my head touches the tent and you have condensation in there and the feet of your quilt or your sleeping bag will get wet. I tried to put a garbage bag over it last time, but that made it worse. So I have this little piece of wool here that I made for something else a long time ago. It, it, it's a little pocket. You can see I sewed it up here and uh, I'm gonna put that over my feet uh, hopefully keep my quilts from getting wet <clears throat> okay moving along here I have another little piece of tarp that I'm going to be using I don't know where but it'll come in handy um, I have my cheap little uh, foldable collapsible chair I don't like bringing my uh, chair zero that costs $130 on these cold winter camping trips this one is a lot more uh, stable and less likely to break. All right, I have a thermos that will be filled with one liter of hot water when I leave. I haven't filled it up yet. I also have four water. I, I bought this eight uh, quart pot at Walmart. I buy my pot at Walmart. Uh, it was only like nine dollars and I'm gonna need a big pot like this because there'll be five of us and I'm in charge of making dinner on two nights I'm gonna make some beefy noodle one night and some uh, shells and cheese with a bunch of jalapeno brats in it should be delicious but uh, big serving since there's gonna be five people and when it's cold out you need to stay well uh, have a lot of nutrients don't be hungry or else it'll be cold uh, also, I have another Nalgene water bottle that'll hold another liter and a, two layers of Reflectix that go over the top to keep it from freezing. You don't want to bring too much water on a winter camping trip because you just got to keep it from freezing. So this pot, uh, we will be getting our water out of uh, the lake and boiling it, but a big pot like this, you could also melt snow. It's just melting snow is kind of dirty and getting the water of the lake is a little cleaner okay shorty shorts we're gonna jump through a hole in the ice again gotta have something to wear okay i have a couple of uh candles here and a little metal plate to put it on these make a good night light at night each of these will burn for 20 hours so uh over three nights these should last nice little night light when I have to wake up in the middle of the night and take a pee, I can see what I'm doing. Um, okay, this is my strap on, snow spikes. All right, I have a little thermo uh, insulated cup here for drinking hot chocolate. I have a hand warmer uh, that I can put inside the pocket of the Lester River. Uh, it's powered by a power bank and it heats up. Uh, the problem that I have, my fingers go numb. So when I'm setting up, when I'm tearing down, I'm going to put my power bank inside of here and I can take a little breaks and warm my fingers up as I'm going. What are the other little things in here? I have one pillow and I have a second pillow. I'm not going to open this up. Uh, this is a compression sack. This has a zero degree top quilt from hammock gear. It has my uh, puffy, my hooded puffy from REI um, with a hood that I really like. It has down uh, booties that I like to wear when it's cold out, uh, even inside of my, uh, my quilt. So that is all in there. And also I have a down inflatable pillow inside of here that my buddy Miyagi made. So I have two pillows 
when I am sleeping on a cot, I need the two pillows to get my head up a little bit um, to make it more comfortable. Also for that, uh, where's the other one here? Also for that uh, polar plunge, I bring a little pair of sandals. I can wear these right in the water. They're rubber, uh, so they'll dry out quick and I don't have to walk on the snow because I'm a delicate flower. All right, here's the second one. Here's the lid for my pot. I have a little bowl here. I have a plate inside of here. Okay, this bag, quickly, uh, when you go in the snow, uh, you can't put regular tent stakes in. These are snow spikes. They're simply a PVC pipe cut in half, put some holes in it, a line on it with a carabiner on the end. You bury this in the snow, it freezes up and it'll hold everything together. However, sometimes if there isn't enough snow, uh, I also bring along these big spikes. So these are just really, really big, like six inch, eight inch long nails that you can pound into the frozen ground. So I have options there if I want to use the snow stakes or the spikes. Keep on moving along here. Almost done. Uh, this is my clothes, my extra clothes. We'll go through here really, really quick. Uh, I have this fleece hoodie that is really nice when it's cold out, uh, not only as a hood, but as like a, a balaclava and uh, you can wear it just around your neck. It's super warm. I like it when it's super cold. We'll see how much I need it since it isn't going to be as cold this trip. I have a pair of tights uh, that I can wear underneath those pants in case I'm not warm enough. An extra pair of underwear. I have a lot of gloves. I'm kind of Imelda Marcos says shoes, I have gloves because I never know which ones are going to be best. I have some big, thick, insulated double X ones where I can wear uh, a thin glove underneath it. You can see these are all black. That's from working with my hot tent and rolling the stove. And when you're working in the hot tent and you want to grab things, it's nice to have some insulation there so you don't burn yourself. Keep on moving here. I have some insulated leather gloves. They work good for processing wood and, and gathering wood uh, when it's cold out. Uh, these are some clamshell. Uh, these are for ultra cold. Uh, you, again, you can wear gloves underneath it, but having some nice warm mittens. I don't think that'll need them, but you never know when you're out there and how you're feeling and you just might have a chill and I'm bringing those with, but I'm thinking maybe I don't need them. And these are my warmest socks. These are, they aren't wool, uh, polar extreme. They're like a fleece, but these are warmer than my wool socks. But I'm not gonna wear them in because I don't wanna get them sweaty walking in. And I have a, just another couple pair of uh, darn tough socks. I was thinking about maybe wearing these as a sock liner, but uh, I'm just gonna bring them along. Who knows if it's hot out there and my feet are sweating. Uh, maybe I don't want to wear my thick socks and I can wear them uh, in my boots. Okay, a couple little things here. This is uh, kind of my ditty bag. Uh, this is the Govi sensor. So this is a Govi's an app. Uh, basically on your phone, you can see what the temperature and the humidity is outside. I'll hang this on a tree when I get there. I can see from inside my hot tent how cold it is. It also tracks uh, over time kind of a, a chart of what the temperatures are. It's really interesting to see. I have three of these metal tins. Inside here uh, are a couple lighters, uh, some fire starters, and my, um, what do you call it, the little thing that you blow through uh, to help with the fire. All right. Keep on rolling. I have some stickers in case I see anybody that they want a sticker. I have a little washcloth for washing out my pans. Uh, anything really. Uh, some corded earbuds for my phone in case I watch a movie or watching videos at night. Uh, some charging cords. I have a thermometer. I hang that inside of my hot tent so I can say, it's 100 degrees in here. It's only 20 degrees outside. Who cares? 
Uh, but this is even more important. It's a carbon monoxide detector when you have that stove going in your tent. You want to be safe and not end up dead. Uh, I have a pair of glasses. Uh, also in here, I have this plastic bag. It has all sorts of disposable heating pads, uh, wet wipes, band-aids, chapstick, an extra water bottle cover, which I don't need, earplugs, uh, carabiners, all sorts of shit. All right. That is everything inside the bag, but we're not done yet. But wait, there's more underneath the bag. I have this insulated uh, seat pad. Put this in my chair or put this on the ground. Keeps you nice and warm and dry. I have a collapsible shovel in here. Uh, a lot of times you need to dig out where your tent or your hammock is going to be. I have my uh, Gomboy, big boy uh, saw here. Very sharp. Uh, I have a splitting axe. A lot of fire processing when you have a hot tent. Uh, this is a pole that I made for the center pole of my hot tent. If there's deep snow, this will allow me to put my tent on top of the snow and dig down so my tent is taller and my pole will be long enough. I hate it when my pole isn't long enough. Okay, this is what I'm proud of. I made this. You can see on here, there are four magnets. So, when I'm in my hot tent or wherever, magnets on here too, right? 13 by 13 inch tabletop. Now my bucket's a table. And the magnets on this thing are pretty strong. Pretty nice, I like it. Okay, we're running out of time. That is everything for my hot tent setup. This is what is gonna be in my hammock setup. This is my hammock winter camping setup. You can see, obviously, it's a lot smaller. And I just weighed it, and it weighs about 30 pounds, which is about half of that hot tent setup. So what is not in here that was in the hot tent setup? The ginormous sleeping pad. The cot, this thing is super heavy. Uh, let's see here, we got the big tarp I don't need plus the heat blanket for over the tarp. Obviously, the hot tent itself in the center pole. My center pole extender. The hot tent stove and stove pipe. The uh, wool cover for my feet. The fire starters, pocket bellow, and lighter. I do have another lighter packed in here. And the carbon monoxide detector. So, there might be some other things that I'm missing, but there's a lot of things that I don't have to bring. I'm not going to go through this whole setup again. I'm going to point out a few things that are a little bit different. Still have the snowshoes. Still have the three and a half gallon uh, bucket with the uh, sealable lid on top that I can put my uh, tabletop on. That's still nice next to the hammock. All right, inside the duffel bag, you can see that it isn't stuffed full like that other one was. All right, we have, I mean, we're still gonna have our, our, the same clothes. I'm not gonna go through them again. And here's my strap on snow spikes uh, the same uh, zero degree top quilt uh, down puffy uh, booties pillow exactly the same in here that same pot with the hand warmers uh, the shorty shorts and the one liter of uh, water inside the Nalgene uh, still have the cup, pillow, okay, this, still have the candles in here, still nice to have that nightlight, even if you aren't 
totally enc encapsulated inside of a tent. Uh, flip flops for the polar plunge. Extra wool booties for the boots. I do have a little Tyvek piece. Uh, this is nice underneath the hammock uh, just to put my boots on. Also when you're in the hammock, uh, your sled can use be used as a storage device uh, to keep things off of the ground as well. One thing I didn't uh, mention that I forgot to mention in the hot tent setup is I have my knife here that my buddy Rob Pelton gave me. I can't remember the name of it. I'll put it in the graphic. But it has the uh, flint and steel on there for building a fire. I have my snow stakes and my spikes. Uh, with other setup, I had to have uh, 11. I brought 12. With this one, I need to have six. I bring in seven. So a little bit of weight savings there. All right, so I have uh, my tarp. This is my bigger tarp from War Bonnet. It has a center pole. Uh, the bigger tarp's nicer in case the weather does get bad. I can pull it down a little bit more than my summer tarp, as well as it has a center pole if there's a lot of snow that helps uh, shed some of that weight. I have my poles and uh, my door pullouts uh, inside of here, and also the spreader bars for my bridge hammock, which is the Ridge Runner. Uh, from War Bonnet. Um, it's the hammock I take on every trip. I love uh, the bridge hammock. Okay. Clothes, as I mentioned, are all the same. Uh, electronics are, I'm not going to go through this all again, but they are a little different. Uh, I don't have that uh, carbon monoxide detector. Uh, otherwise, everything looks pretty similar. So the glasses, the charging cords, uh, all the hand warmers, and all that extra stuff inside that bag. Still have the bowl. Still bring in a chair. Still have the thermos. And this is uh, the big difference: is this is a uh, negative 20 under quilt from Local Libre. Uh, I could have packed this in a lot smaller bag, but on that last morning when you're packing up and your fingers are cold and you're tired, who wants to deal with a compression sack? I already got one. I can fit more stuff into this huge 40 liter bag if I need to, but it, I, I have plenty of room. I don't need to compress. Uh, I got the bowl here underneath. You know, still got the ax, still got the shovel, still got the saw, still got the tabletop, still got the pad. I do not have that uh, center pull uh, uh, extender. So, I don't know, friends. On this camping trip, there are five guys. One guy is bringing a snow trekker type bigger hot tent. So he will have a bigger stove. I am not bringing my oven for my little stove. Most of the cooking will be done on his bigger stove inside that bigger tent. We do have that bigger tent for uh, drying out, warming up in case I brought my hammock. The big difference is sleeping in a hammock is actually more comfortable than for me to sleep on the pad by just a little bit. The part where the hot tent comes in handy, even if we have that other hot tent, is when I'm going to bed at night and when I'm waking up in the morning, it's nice to stoke up that little fire, start out your day uh, nice and warm, be nice and warm when you go to bed. So which one am I gonna bring? I don't know. I guess you'll have to watch the video to find out. And I'm not being a jerk, just making you watch that video. I honestly don't know which one I'm gonna do yet. So I'm not gonna tie myself down to which setup I'm gonna use. But tell me in the comments, which ones do you, which one do you think that I should use? Boundary Waters, it's a three mile hike in, walking over a lake, 60 pounds versus 30 pounds, hot tent versus hammock. It's a toss up, but thanks for coming along. I know this video got a little long. If you like this video, go ahead and hit subscribe, punch the bell notification, check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Don't just hide out in the winter. Get out on the trail. The air is beautiful. The sun's beautiful. 
We'll see you on the trail.